So D&D Beyond, the proprietary online platform slash toolkit for playing and running Dungeons and Dragons digitally, just released a ton of interesting data about every character created on their platform in the year of 2023. And very interestingly, we got a similar data set from Larian Studios, makers of Baldur's Gate 3, and it is shocking to see the disparity in the numbers from the Baldur's Gate 3 data to the D&D Beyond data. Like I knew Baldur's Gate 3 was insanely popular, but I didn't realize how insanely more popular it is than D&D Beyond. And I wanna share this weird but interesting data with you because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, and we're gonna jump right in to these staggering and seemingly misleading numbers <laughs> from the D&D Beyond 2D map virtual tabletop tool that just launched this year. They say 180 million characters or NPCs were played and 88 million monsters were fought or befriended. Now at first glance, 180 million characters sounds insane. It's really this or NPCs part that I think is the operative uh, part of this phrase because as you'll see in a moment as we get to the class and species data that 180 million is a couple orders of magnitude off of the entire number of characters created in 2023. So for NBCs and monsters, sure, this sounds reasonable, but basically I really think this just means tokens dragged onto a map. But moving on to point number two, which is much more positive and cool, over 37,000 players contributed to charity through D&D Beyond. That's awesome. Now some Baldur's Gate 3 adjacent data. Gale was the most popular Baldur's Gate 3 character. So there was a set of character sheets created in D&D Beyond for each of the main characters of Baldur's Gate 3. They say down here in the text how they also did this for the Dungeons and Dragons movie. And aside from those movie characters, which were actually apparently more popular than the Baldur's Gate 3 ones, much to my surprise, ya boy, Gale was the most popular of the Baldur's Gate 3 characters. And this is also interesting because a wizard being popular really clashes with uh, all the other data we're about to see about the classes. And then some other quick points before we get into that class and species data, average age of characters, 28, Sounds reasonable. I feel like most of the characters I've made are around that point. I've had a couple really old guys, a couple really young people, but uh, yeah, that sounds about right. And the average current level of characters created, 4.77. This one feels right. I do wish we had more data on like how many characters at each level. And again, for the whole data set, not just 2023, because that kind of stuff really interests me. But moving on, another one I wish we had more specific data for, the most popular name on D&D Beyond, Bob. Now I'm not saying it has anything to do with, uh, no, obviously it doesn't. Bob is just like a default name. There have been a number of times in my life where I've introduced myself and people have been like, really? Thinking I'm making up my own name because uh, of how generic it is. But we don't know how many Bobs are out there. We just know it's the most popular. So is it 50% of characters are all named Bob? I highly doubt it. Is it just like 2% of characters are named Bob, but it still happens to be the single most popular name? More likely. But now getting into the real fun part here, the species. So we have what looks like a relatively even distribution, right? Human, the most popular, elf, second most popular, followed by dragonborn, tiefling, half-elf, dwarf, halfling, half-orc, ganasi, Whoa, that's interesting because all those ones before it were from the player's handbook and then Gnome right after it is from the player's handbook, but Ganassi is not. And similarly, right after Gnome, we got Goliath, Asimar, Arakakra, and then lineages and custom lineages. So first, some conjecture about why I think these are where they are. Human just kind of feels like the default option and Elf is like how you know you're playing a fantasy game. So playing an Elf or a half Elf for that matter makes a lot of sense, but yeah. All these characters here are either free because they're in the basic rules, or they were once free because the Ganassi, Goliath, and Arakakra were all originally in the Elemental Evil Player's Companion. So it makes me think that those are all just really popular races because they've been around for so long and many people have them in their d, &D Beyond account because they had them free at some point. They didn't have to pay for them. Similarly, the Asimar is actually published 
in the Dungeon Master's Guide, if I'm not mistaken. I guess I'd have to double check that to be absolutely sure. So I just found it funny that out of over 50 options for your character's species slash race, the most popular ones on Data Beyond are just the free ones or the ones where you get to make it up yourself. It's just homebrew. I think that's pretty cool. And now to rag on whoever made this graph for a second. Yes, it looks pretty. I think what they were trying to do was get all the names in the bars and it looks good. But as someone with a background in the sciences, my jaw dropped when I saw the butchery of this scale. And maybe no one else will care about this, but check it out. We increased by 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000. Jump up to increasing by 100,000 from 100 to 200K. And then our scale changes again, going up 300,000 from two to 500K. And then we change our scale a third time, <laughs> increasing by 200,000 to go from five to 700K. So like, probably no one cares about that, but here's what the data actually looks like, okay? With a linear scale, we can really get the sense that, wow, people are just playing humans and elves. <laughs> and to do the math, it came out to right about 50% of all characters based on this data are either human, elf, or dragonborn. So with around 50 plus races available, people are really sticking to human, elf, and then dragons, which is cool for fantasy. And then we can look at the similar data from Larian Studios for Baldur's Gate 3, where first of all, great job on the scale guys, increasing linearly by 100,000. Our most popular options are half elf, human, and elf. So pretty much the same, right? And then actually followed by Dragonborn and Tiefling. But the shocking part is that, hey, you know, our, our magnitude of uh, characters here is actually pretty similar around, you know, several hundred thousand each. But this data from Baldur's Gate 3 is just from the opening weekend there were 1.7 million characters made. And if we compare that to D&D Beyond, all year, around 3.2 million characters made. So just putting that in perspective, in about two, three days, I don't know how you measure an opening weekend, let's say three days even, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 1.7 million made versus 365 days for D&D Beyond, 3.2 million made. That's wild. And it actually just gets even more blown through the roof when we look at all year, in heavy air quotes there for Baldur's Gate 3, being only about four months from August to December, 31.3 million characters made. What the heck? So you gotta wonder, if we added together all of D&D Beyond 5e characters made, all of Roll20 5e characters made, all of Foundry, characters made. Actually, I don't even know. Does Foundry have a character creator as well as a map? I'm not sure. And all of the analog D&D characters made. And if you say just 5e characters made in 2023, would there be 31 million? I really don't know. I imagine that there are like a vast silent majority of analog players out there. And then like D&D Beyond really represents kind of a small cohort of the D&D, like the modern D&D community. But this is just nuts. 31 million. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments. But let's jump to the D&D Beyond classes. Uh, and for this one, you know, we can actually look at the D&D Beyond graph because even though the <laughs> scale is still butchered, increasing from like 20, 20, 20, and then up by 10, up by 10,000 again, and then up by 100,000, and then up by 100,000 again, pretty much all the data lies between 100 and I guess 400,000 uh, characters made. The only reason I think that they included this finer scale at all was to show the artificer. <laughs> but if we look at like the real distribution here, of course we see that it is still relatively level, except the artificer is really unpopular. But again, it's a character you gotta pay for, so it kind of makes sense. And it's just interesting to see that the fighter is still the most popular option. So the average character on D&D Beyond is a human fighter named Bob. Like who's spamming all these characters on D&D Beyond, dude? And these numbers are really different from the classes on uh, Baldur's Gate 3. So we'll take a quick look at this. We got fighter, rogue, barbarian, the cool fighter, right? Wizard, paladin, a fighter who could, who's also a wizard. <laughs> Jumping to Baldur's Gate 3, opening weekend, paladin, the most popular class. And then sorcerer, which was, if we look, the third least popular class in D&D Beyond is the second most popular one on Baldur's Gate 3. And I don't think this moved much to the four month data set. Yeah, Paladin, Sorcerer. Okay, 
Fighter did become more popular for Baldur's Gate 3 over the course of the year. Uh, but in both cases, Cleric stayed at the very end. I guess in the video gaming community, uh, playing the healer is still the least popular option. Now jumping back to what I found to be the most interesting part of the D&D Beyond data. They have this whole section with numbers from the mobile app. 13 million searches on the mobile app. 7 million spells cast through the mobile app. And here's the crazy part. 1.9 million players rolled dice. To me, that means there are approximately 1.9 million active players using the D&D Beyond mobile app. But suspiciously, there were 6 million new characters created on the D&D Beyond mobile app when we only had about 3 million characters created on D&D Beyond. But we can see down in the text here, finally, 6 million new characters were brought to life from the app, whether by creating a custom character, that's what all that other data was, or rolling up a pre-made character. But we know that there's only around 2 million players actively using the app. So like they each made three characters, I'm like over the course of the year, this is just where it gets really muddy. And like I said, we don't have like a number of players using D&D Beyond as a whole. And actually, I wonder if I can find how many players, how many people bought Baldur's Gate 3? So according to dotesports.com, which has like the most ads I've ever seen on a website, approximately 21 million copies of Baldur's Gate 3 have been sold just on Steam versus 1.9 million people rolling dice on the D&D Beyond app. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you think about this in the comments, but it seems like even far more than I thought, Baldur's Gate 3 has truly outshined at least the digital player base of D&D. So if you found this interesting, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing to see more, and consider joining Patreon or maybe buying one of my t-shirts through the links below. Those are all great ways to support the channel. So thank you to the Bob World Builder patrons and channel members who made this video possible, but thank you for whatever support you're able to give and keep building.